Hello my friend, how are you today? Uh, I want to first start off by saying thank you very much for your video response. Um, your latest video response I am going to get into has been very interesting. And I wanted to say first of all that I do agree with you that it, it is nice to see that there are people who are interested in a very intelligent show. It's a very underrated show because I don't understand why it doesn't get like an Emmy or a Golden Globe for best series because it is probably one of the best shows on TV. Excuse me. Um, but for the most part, you know, I I do agree with a lot of what you're saying about what the show, what's happening into the show because we're only eight episodes left before the season finale, and I have to tell you they're really stepping up. It's a it's been a very fast paced show. They didn't really drag it with um with theories or they didn't drag it with the science or they didn't drag it with uh with their cases they really got into the story arc and they're really getting people interested as to well will peter be, get back to his timeline or is he already in his timeline and tries to figure out how he's going to get people to remember him now i wanted to first say thank you for for listening to my video and um, I do want to apologize to you personally because I think I was a little too hard on your opinions and I didn't want you to think like your opinions didn't matter I think I was just more mad at the fact that it does seem like it's leading towards your theory which is well maybe Peter really doesn't need to go into another timeline because he's already there at the present moment the question in now is is that how do we get Peter or how is it that Olivia which I am gonna get to uh, your questions in a minute but more more importantly we're getting into the fact that okay is it really the machine that's gonna help him get him back to his timeline or does he need somebody to help remember and bring back the people he loved back to the timeline that he wants to go back to and get back to the people he loved and get back to some normalcy. Um, I did see the episodes of Making Angels and Welcome to Westfield. And I have to agree with you. Those were two exciting episodes. Two great episodes. Making Angels was very, very good. I, I like that episode because it was the first episode within the entire seasons of Fringe that it dealt with Astrid. And I like that. I like that episode because the asterisk from the bridge universe or the parallel universe or whatever way you want to call it came to our world and basically wanted to meet her double and then basically wanted to talk about the fact that, you know what, her father died and yet the, her father in the bridge universe didn't really love her the way she wanted to be loved. And... I love the ending to that episode because it was really sad because, you know, Astrid in our world was getting a little jealous because Walter loved this one because she wasn't, you know, she was more an intelligent person and, you know, I think the Astrid in our world is kind of like, you know, maybe she's not as intelligent as Walter wants her to be. Sometimes I think Walter kind of disrespects her because maybe, or he kind of makes fun of her because she could be better. And I think, you know what it is, she never really, like, you know, responds to uh, Walter's jokes. Like, he'll call her Astro or Aspirin or something like that. And then she kind of, like, you know, laughs it off where the Astrid in the parallel universe automatically lets Walter know, hey, you know what, my name is Astrid, don't call me nothing else. So I kind of like that that there were two, there were definitely the asterisks with two different uh, personalities. But what I loved about the ending to that episode in Making Angels was, was that, first of all, I think that Astrid in our world said, you know what, she wanted to kind of give this particular, her double, a kind of like a, a positive reinforcement as to when you go back, don't hate yourself or don't disrespect yourself and say, you know what, 
uh, my father didn't love me because I was a, I was brilliant but eccentric. But you know what? Everybody shows love differently. And I think what she wanted her to go back and say, you know what? Don't hate yourself for what your father did to you in your life. Just know that, you know what, you grew up to be a very positive person. You grew up to be a very intelligent person. You might be eccentric, but you know what, that's who you are as a human being. And you know something, go back to your world and know you can love yourself and not hate yourself for what you believe your father hated you for. And, you know, I like that at the very end when she goes to meet uh, when Astrid goes to meet her father in our universe, he wasn't that abusive person. He was a loving father. I think Astrid figured, you know what? He, she, it, it maybe it wasn't right to lie to her like that. But you know something? This was a woman who basically wanted to know that you know what? When she went back to her own world, that you know what? She just, I think she just wanted to know that you know what? It's going to be better, and it was need to be told. You know, so I think that that was a very smart move for our asterisk in our universe to kind of do it that way. Um, there were some surprising episodes along that lines of making angels. Like, for example, we find out the that September disobeyed the Observer's uh, rules in trying to change the timeline but he didn't really fix it so basically he's letting things happen as is so September's in trouble with his other observer buddies so there's a lot of interesting we'll, I guess we'll probably find out as to how he got shot because as you remember um, that was the revelation where September tells of Olivia you know what you're gonna die you have to die in your future and basically he didn't say it along in that lines but you kinda get the gist but it, you know the point is is that you know right now September is making enemies and you know a lot of people are not happy about what he did and then we come to the most important episode which even Entertainment Weekly gave an A plus on which is Welcome to Westfield and I have to agree with you that Welcome to Westfield was a great episode, and I love the shocking revelation at the end when we find out that Olivia seems to remember that she's in love with Peter. Now, it does go back to your theory, which is, okay, you know what, like you said in the beginning, why does Peter need to go into a time machine when basically maybe the timeline he doesn't really have to go back because he's already at his own timeline. He just has to get people to remember him. So the question is, why now are, is Olivia remembering? Does it have to do with massive dynamic? Does it have to do with the fact that they have been playing with her brain and maybe for some reason, you know, maybe they're trying to keep Peter in this particular timeline? And again, like you said, you know, Maybe the timeline, maybe we're looking too deep into the timelines. Maybe we just need to look at the characters themselves. Because I guess they keep, I guess you know what it is with a show like this. I think the timelines, like you and I have been debating on, is that we seem to be looking at the timelines. And like you said, we don't really know if there is a timeline. Because there's so many timelines happening at once. Even when they're in their case files. There seems to be timelines where in the Westfield episode, the parallel universes seem to be linking together, becoming as one. Then there was, like I told you before, the uh, uh, previous case where a professor was playing with timeline to, to go back, keep going back into time, but for a short amount of time just to be with his wife that he loved because she had Alzheimer's, I believe, or something to that lines. But it's just the interesting fact that, you know what, a lot of timelines are happening here, or I should say, or time paradox is being played with here. The idea that there's so many timelines happening at once, I don't know if the writers want us to say, you know what, you draw your own conclusions as to how many timelines there are. You might see two, I might see three, uh, someone else might see just one timeline and there really isn't any. But, you know, for the most part, I hope that the show doesn't get too cryptic like that because 
then it, like you said, it does get confusing. Because for all I know, there could be three or there could be four. Because the only reason why I believe there's so many more timelines is because it goes back to what Walter is saying. Walter does believe in his theory that there are variations of us in many universes. So depending on how many universes are in the galaxy, we'll never know. It's only, I think only maybe Walter can figure that out. Maybe William Bell can figure that out. But you know what? As of right now, we just know that there are doubles in this particular world that we're in. Which is, okay, they discovered a parallel universe and now we're in our universe. And then, of course, Peter brought the bridge universe together. So, you know, right now, as to answer your question about how I felt about the Westfield episode... I really thought it was very, very exciting. It was very, very like like Alice in Wonderland type of episode, but you know something? Because she had a hard time getting back to, as you remember the storyline, Alice had a hard time getting back to her own world. So it was like that. It was a very, very good episode. And what I also love was the shocking revelation because if you if I don't know if you saw the promo for epi- for the for the next episode for the uh, to be a better human being I think that's what it's called well that's what they have for the title um there was a, a scene in that promo episode where you saw Peter wearing a suit that black outfit the same outfit that he was wearing when he tried to get into the machine the first time before the, the machine didn't want him to get in so this machine was very sensitive I think in this episode they're gonna try to make an attempt to get on that machine which basically means that they need Broyles' uh, permission to get into the machine and then test test the machine to see if he's able to get in and try to go back to his own timeline. So I hope, you know what it is, like you said, at, we're now getting into the gist of the story, which is very good because I love now that we're getting into the story as to is Peter going to be able to get back to his timeline or... Or is he going to fix the problems that happen here? Because one thing that Peter and you and I both agree that, you know what, Peter is smart. <laughs> He's a smart dude, but he knows something went wrong here. And you know something, like you said, the question is how does he fix the wrong is the problem. So I will say to you, because I, you know, I, I'm sorry that this video was a little long, so I apologize. Um, I am going to check out this Friday's episode because I am curious to see if Peter is going to make the attempt to try to get into the machine with Boyos' help or without this help. Because again, like you said, you know, there are timelines all happening at once. So right now the question is, you know, like you said, let's not try to focus so much on the timeline issue. Let's see where this goes in terms of is September have something to do with trying to get Peter's world back? Maybe he's involved. Or like you said before, there does seem to be a religious factor because I do agree with you that in season three, it did seem like like they were trying to do like a like their version of Jesus Christ sacrifice himself to save the universes from going all out war and destroying one another so I do agree that it did feel that way and I hope that they don't use Astrid as a sort of sacrifice to save the pivotal characters you know it does seem like in Olivia's destiny that she does have to die and maybe you know she has to die with a purpose or Maybe with her power, because as we all know, she has the ability to kind of, you know, transfer or I should say make herself go from one planet or one universe to another. So that's an amazing gift. I mean, how many people, you know, can do that? But, you know, for the most part, it is rather interesting that the show is getting deeper and deeper. You know, I just wanted to ask you an interesting question, which is, do you believe... 
that there is another parallel universe as the way Fringe is explaining it? Or are you like like the rest of the world? You just believe that this is just very good science fiction? Because I, I, I asked a couple of people who watch Fringe like I do on the internet. Because I sometimes go on community sites. And a lot of people have said, you know what? They do believe that there might be another parallel universe only because it would make kind of sense because some people believe that we're not the only humans on Earth. So I just was wondering what's your theory on that. Do you believe that that the shows that they're showing us about the parallel universes, do you believe that there's a the that theory could be true or do you think it's just great science fiction? So I just wanted to know your personal opinion on that one. And um, like I said, you know, I am going to follow these episodes because it is getting really good. And I, you know something, for the most part, I have to tell you that it would be disappointing if they canceled this show when the show is getting this good. So the Fringe writers are getting us into, you know, we got eight episodes left. It's getting really, really good. You know, I know we have to wait till like May, and which kind of sucks because I, I wish we didn't have to wait that long. But, you know, we had to wait until they get to 22 episodes. So, you know, before I call this video to an end, I just, you know, want to say thank you again for your video responses. So, this is an open letter for part two. You know, I hope that. You take the time and, you know, I apologize again for it being so long. I guess because I get so into the story. And like you said, it does keep me intrigued. So, you know, I'm glad that two friends are able to talk about it and respect one another's opinions. So that's a great thing, too. So I'm going to call this video a close. So, you know, again, you know, my, my final point on all of this is, you know, something the episodes are being well written and, you know, right now, as as to what I see is going on, I do believe that Massive Dynamic does have something to do with Olivia saying I love you. But then again, you know, like you said before, we are still in, maybe we're still in the same timeline. And maybe her memory is coming back. Because you notice now that everyone's memories seem to be coming back. Like, you know... She dreamt about Peter. She didn't know who this guy was. And then all of a sudden, this guy finally arrives at the point of being in their world. Then now they're trying to say that, you know, for the most part, you know, she's in love with Peter remembers. And the thing that I found mostly interesting is when Walter says that it's wrong what you're doing. So the question now is, is that does Peter fall in love with with Olivia right now or what's going on is is that because he maybe she like is falling in love with him personally and doesn't really have to do with the mem like she says she remembers everything that Peter's been talking about but I do believe that massive dynamic is playing with that so maybe there there's an evil cause as to why they're doing that and maybe there's a reason to sort of play with Peter, because as we all know, there had there's had to ugh, excuse my excuse me I kind of stuttered that. Um, there has to be a reason why she all of a sudden remembers but didn't remember before. So now the question is is that you know why is Olivia remembering Peter's love now? You know maybe the observers timeline in trying to erase Peter maybe that failed or maybe uh, it has something to do with Olivia's power and the ability to get her to remember maybe some people have been saying that or maybe it's just the fact that their love is so strong that maybe the whole time you can't really erase love because it's always going to be there and that she loves Peter and Peter will always be the person she truly loves. So, like all love stories, maybe you can never erase love. So, you know, these are things that we definitely, that I definitely will keep up on. So, I know, my friend, you're going to be watching this, uh, this Friday's episode. So, hit me up with your video response. Tell me what you think of this particular response. And hit me up with Friday's and... 
I should be able to post a new one for you by Saturday or Sunday the latest. So, you know, I can't wait to talk to you this week. You have a wonderful day and a great week. And take care of yourself, my friend. And it's glad to know I'm glad to know that there's someone else out there who loves the same things as I do. So take care of yourself and God bless you.